Alright Sons everybody, welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. Today we're at Disney World at Galaxy's Edge for the first time in like two months and they have introduced a lot of new food options. They have some new vegetarian dishes over at Ronto's Roasters and over at Docking Bay. They have so much stuff. We are going to be eating like kings today. I'm so excited for just new food at Galaxy's Edge. It's going to be an exciting day guys. Come with us on this adventure. <laughs> One of the differences between Disneyland and Disney World that I find really funny is there's always people when you come to the parks with a loudspeaker just kind of blah 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 blah. You can't like exactly hear what they're saying. Like it sounds like we're at like a swap meet. And they just keep saying it over and over and over again. It's just so weird. It's so different than what we're used to. It it's always so makes louder. me laugh whenever we walk in. There's always like four different people like blah 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 blah. It sounds like that that bidding guy at the auction. Yes. It's just, I can't hear what she's saying. It's just, like, it's like mumbled, you know what I mean? All right, let's get inside. One thing Disneyland doesn't have is being able to go through the entrance with my Apple Watch, and that is so satisfying. Avengers Campus, I showed you this hidden secret on the Disneyland app. If you zoomed in on the map, you could find a hidden baby Groot. Well, over here at Hollywood Studios in Florida, if you zoom in on the Hollywood Studios map, you'll actually find that the, the launch pad for the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser is right nearby. The Star Cruiser isn't there. That's up in space somewhere. But the launch pad is there. And if you, if you look at that and you zoom in, you can actually see Kitcher's favorite. <laughs> Wicked! Wicked what is he Ewok? doing there? Why is he? Why isn't he up on the ship with us? They don't allow Ewoks in space. They don't? Okay, then I don't want to go. <laughs> Maybe they'll be Ewoks. Speaking of the Galactic Star Cruiser, when that opens next year, you're gonna have an excursion day on Batu, and you're gonna take a shuttle down to this planet, and it's gonna land right here. That's why you see them doing work right now, because that's where the shuttle is gonna drop. Offer you one of our restricted frequencies for emergency use only, but you're already on it. Stick to civilian channels, civilian. Hold on. Excellent. The newest member of the squad. First up here in Batu East, we're heading over to Ronto Roasters because they have some brand new items on the menu, and most of them are vegetarian, plant-based, so we're gonna try some of those. First up for breakfast this morning is the one non-vegetarian thing that we got, and this is the Kirill pork rinds. These are pork rinds seasoned in a savory blend of ancho chili, cheddar, smoke, and cinnamon. And in case you didn't know, Kirill is actually a planet on the outer rim. It's never been mentioned in any of the movies or TV shows, but it has been mentioned in the books. So I am very interested to try these little guys out. I mean, just look at those. That looks so alien to me. They don't look the same as when we had them over on Batu West. Yeah, in Disneyland, they actually had something very similar to this a couple years ago. It is no longer on any of the menus there. For some reason, they decided to bring them over here to Florida, but they changed them. Before, it was just like cinnamon sh and sugar on a pork rind. This has that chili, and it has cheddar, and it has cinnamon. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't read the ingredients before we ordered these, and it sounds very strange. It looks so weird, doesn't it? I don't know, it almost doesn't even look like a pork rind. I think these two are just like glued together. Oh my god! Mmm! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Hold on. 
I got <laughs> Corel spices everywhere. <laughs> this is such a nice pairing of flavors. It almost tastes like Indian food, but you can really taste the cheddar and the smoke flavor, and it's not spicy at all. These are really good. And you could definitely still taste the pork rind flavor though. That's the only like negative. Like we both don't really like pork rinds that much. I really didn't anticipate liking these as much as I do. The only kind of bummer part is, is they're kind of expensive for how many you get. Like if you could see, like there's not really that many in there. It's like you maybe get like 10 of them. And this costs $7.50, which I feel like is kind of really expensive. So for that, these probably get like a two and a half out of five pitras. I think some of the tourists who are coming to Patu have been complaining that there isn't enough vegetarian options, especially at breakfast. Thankfully, the, the workers at Ronto's Roasters have, have found some stuff in the farms over at Pika to create some options for you guys that just like veggies. The first of which is the Andoan fruit and muju sauce. And this has sticks of jicama, cucumber, pineapple, melon, dragon fruit, doused in a tamarind sauce, dusted with peppercorn ash, and it's completely plant-based. And if you didn't know, the planet of Ando is famous for the Andoan Wars, which took place a couple decades before the Clone Wars. Again, it's one of those things that you find in the books and not so much in the movies or TV shows. But now they have this this option. And you know what? It's basically what it sounds like it's gonna taste like. <laughs> yeah. But it's pretty good. It's a little like a refreshing mix of fruit and veggies. Not very spicy. It's just like a refreshing option. I think I'd give it like around the same as what you gave the pork rinds. Probably Two and like a half. three out of five Peters. I like it. It's an option for you guys that don't, you know, want to eat the, the Ronto. We know, you know, the Ronto is this big creature that the Jawas <laughs> Don't ride, remind me. So. I get sad every time I eat one. <laughs> but they taste so good. I know. So we need to go back. It's that dilemma. I know. Well, <laughs> but, listen, if you don't want to eat a Ronto, get the fruit cup. Yeah. Oops. I mean, that's basically what it is. It's yeah. a Star Wars fruit cup. <laughs> As for another vegetarian option, I got the Three Sons Breakfast Wrap. And what this has is plant-based egg, a smoky chickpea onion slaw, and roasted tomato sauce wrapped in pita bread. This looks very similar to the Zuki Wrap, which is something that they sell after breakfast. And it's basically the same thing, it just has a zucchini in it instead of the plant-based eggs. But this is like full to the brim. Like they put a lot of, <laughs> of filling in there. So I'm not mad at it, but let's give it a try. Mm. I think I like this better than the Zuki wrap. Because if you remember the last time we were in Batu East, we actually tried that and I was a little underwhelmed. But this, I think, although it does taste very similar, it has that tomato sauce in it, which just gives it like more deep of a flavor. It's very, very tasty. It doesn't, it's not very like breakfasty though. So like, I don't know, it's not like eggs and bacon and cheese or whatever, like, it almost tastes like a pasta. You can't taste that, like, plant-based eggs? Uh, you can! I mean, they, they really don't have that much of a flavor to them, to be honest. Yeah. It, it really just does taste like, a, kind of like a spicy pasta. Honestly, I'd give it like a 4 out of 5 kitras. It's a good vegetarian option, I think. And of course, the reason why they call it the Three Sons Breakfast Wrap is because Batu has three sons, and today in Orlando, Wait, what's Orlando? I know, what are you talking today about? Today in Batu, <laughs> all three of those suns are out and shining really high. Oh my By God, the way, yep. sitting here, I've seen some of the, the creature life here on Batu. We saw this lizard creature, we saw this flying creature. I know, it almost looks like what we call them butterflies on our They do world. call them butterflies on our planet. <laughs> and then there's also those, those creatures that are in the white masks. We call them stormtroopers. <laughs> As we mentioned, there's three suns in Batu, so the sun is strong today. All over the outpost, they have these umbrellas. I think in the past we've said that they look kind of like a star destroyer. Yeah. But I've actually learned from the laughing place that these are actually referenced from Jabba's sailing barge from Return of the Jedi. Because yes. it had like a kind of overhang. Yeah, I totally like a, see it. Yeah. <laughs> 
How cool is that? Like, even the umbrellas have a reference from the film. Yeah, the best film, some might say. You would say. <laughs> Over in the marketplace, Cat Saka's Kettle has finally reopened. It's been closed. It reopened a little bit after the one at Disneyland reopened. And they have that original outpost mix and the blue buttered greens, which is just like a normal popcorn with blue food day. But yeah, they don't have that banana or chocolate popcorn here. But I, I, we just like to specify like, when we were at Disney World, they have certain things, and when you're at Disneyland, they have different things. Yeah, it's a little so, confusing. I know, and a lot of people watching our videos, they never know like where we are, so now you know. If you are at, in Florida, you can get the original Outpost mix or the blue buttered grains. I kind of miss that original Outpost mix. I know, I kind of want to get some, but maybe later. <laughs> so one Easter egg we've never shown you in Doc Ondar's is in the corner, it's on the Baby Sarlacc containment unit. If you know, in Return of the Jedi, they have a Sarlacc that ate or didn't eat Bubba Fett. Well, here we have a baby Sarlacc, and on the markings on the containment unit is symbols that you might recognize if you're a Ghostbusters fan. This is a, the same symbols that you'd see on the proton pack on the Ghostbusters. My friend Bruce, who's an animator and director at Disney Animation, pointed this out to me. How cool is it that there's a Ghostbusters reference in Doc Ondar? Doc Ondar must be like a fan of, <laughs> yeah. you know, the paranormal. He likes to, he wants to collect Slimer one day. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine that in this collection? I love it. We saw the coolest tattoo. It's all Lego Star Wars characters. I've never seen anything like that before. Check it out. You got everybody on there. You got Yoda, you got Boba Fett. Over here, you got Han Solo. <laughs> oh, that is wow. cool. That is famous. Can cool. we just take a minute to appreciate Peter's bound today? He's bounding his Grogu. He's got the hat, he's got the shirt. He's got the phone and he's got the watch. Because when you bound, you don't yeah. mess around. Yeah, it has to be all over. <laughs> Chewy! Chewy, Vi's looking for you. Where'd he go? It's like fixing the, the speeders. I've been practicing. <laughs> what was that? How did you know my name? Oh, I, um, I heard. Uh, I'm not, don't worry, I'm not with the First Order, but I wanted to actually tell you that Kylo actually landed his ship over there. And I, and I saw some stormtroopers walking around. Okay. Yeah. Some stormtroopers? Yeah. How many? I saw two. Two? Yeah. Yeah, but I wanted to come over. I'm with the Resistance, and I wanted, I'm, I wanted to come well, let you know. I appreciate your intel. Yes. So, in this direction? Yeah, they're right over there. Kylo was with the two stormtroopers, and they were even separate. They were all together. He was like barking orders at them and telling them. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like typical Kyle. I know. When is he not doing that, to be honest? <laughs> I gave them no information. There were Thank there. You so much for your help. Yeah, you're What's welcome. Your name? My name's Kitra. What is it? Kitra. Is that your real name or your code name? That's my code name. Yeah. Are you going to ever give them your real name? I know. Never. And if they ask if you've seen any other members of the no, Nothing of course not. What are they talking what about? about? Have you yeah. Seen no. Who's, who's that? Uh, yeah. Okay. I got you, girl. Don't worry. Yeah. So how do you yes. your help? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank Safe you. Travel. Yes. See anything else suspicious? Yeah, I'll let you know. Don't worry. <laughs> yes. I'll say this. Over in Disneyland, we haven't seen Vi since they reopened. So she's still out running missions over here on the east side of Batu, but I've. I haven't seen her on the west side. It is lunchtime. We're going to head over to Docking Bay 7. They have new entrees. They have a new dessert. I'm excited. Let's go. You guys enjoy. Thank you. Oh, that looks good. And then I'll get the drinks for you as well, okay? Great. The first new entree at Docking Bay 7 is the Batuan beef and crispy tapato stir fry. And this is smoky braised beef glazed with tamarind sauce, served with stir fried vegetables, crispy herb yuca, pickled onions, and cilantro. In case you didn't know, tapatos are a vegetable in the Star Wars galaxy. They can be eaten baked or creamed. <laughs> They're mostly in the books and the video games, not so much in the movies and TV shows. And uh, fun fact, tapato, is an anagram of potato. Potato. 
Oh my god, do you see how tender that was? I know, it looks really good. Wow, I didn't even need that fork. You see that? How it just like pulls apart? I know, I got knives as if we needed them. Wow, instantly, huh? This might be the best thing in Docking Bay 7. Oh my god. And they still have the Kadu Ritz over here. We don't have those in Disneyland. Wow, that is so good. That beef is just like so flavorful, so tender, so juicy. Please, please, vegetables, don't mess this up. The yuca is crispy, probably too crispy. I'm not sure if these veggies really complement this dish as good as it should be, but that beef is so good. I would still highly recommend this. Vegetables can't mess it up. Still five out of five Peters. <laughs> so good. Speaking of which, if you do not want these vegetables, there's other options on the mobile app. You can get the blueberry muffin and slaw from the Kato Ribs. You can get macaroni and cheese with veg vegetables, or you get the white rice and roasted vegetables, which you'll see on one of our other dishes. That's a big bite. Why did I get such a big bite? It looks so good. Mm. <laughs> Hope everything else is as good as this. This was like a good start. We're near going to start? Yes. You know it. <laughs> Next up is the pika tuna pokey. And what this is is raw tuna tossed in a spicy sriracha dressing and served with green papaya salad, pickled mushrooms, fresh herbs, and crispy garlic. In case you didn't know, pika is a small fishing and farming community on Batu, and they will travel to Black Spire Outpost to sell their catches and their fruits and vegetables to Black Spire Outpost. So this is actually something that was caught in pika, and they brought it all the way here, and it looks By the way, real who, good. who would have known? I, I thought pika was just something that pika shoots that thing. I know, me too, but apparently it's a fishing and farming community on Batu. I want to travel there. I hope one day we could explore the, the town of Pika. Yeah. Because this looks really good. I mean, how alien does this look? I have never seen a poke bowl that looks like this. There's some stuff over here. Like, this looks like the bacon dog strip that, that we give to our dogs at home. Doesn't that look like that? Like, I don't know what that is, but the presentation on this is really awesome. All right, Pika, we see you. They got good fish over there in Pika. This is really, really good. Wow. The sriracha dressing on here is so nice. It almost tastes like a spicy tuna bowl. It's just so fresh and nice and like cold and cool on this hot Batuian day. It's something completely different than anything else that you could find here in Galaxy's Edge. I really, really like this. I really want to try this bacon strip. <laughs> you know, I'm going to I'm going to go bold with this one. This one gets a five catrice. This is really, really, really good. It's even better than I thought it was going to be. I feel like when you're in Galaxy's Edge, you notice the details everywhere, except for in Docking Bay, because you're too busy eating. But if you look around, this place is filled with storytelling. Like above one of the shipping crates, there's a mini carbon freezing chamber where they're carbon freezing some of the food that is being served here. <laughs> That's cool. Which is really cool. There's like packages, there's fish hanging next to the like cargo seats and stuff like that. Do you think those came from the Pika Village? They probably did. <laughs> like when you're here, you're looking down at your plate and yeah. you're not looking up and looking around. And sometimes you gotta do that to appreciate the like the design. Next up is the thing I've been most excited to try. This is the Perginad Hot Chicken Tip Yip. This is crispy chicken glazed in a spicy chipotle sauce, served with white rice, relish of sweet corn, shishito peppers, jicama, plantains, and cilantro. I don't know what Perginad is. It doesn't exist in the Star Wars Galaxy as far as I can tell, but apparently it's some kind of spice because they have the Andorian Tip yip, which is kind of like the chickens on Endor. So this is basically like a spicy version of the Endorian Tip yip, and I'm excited to try this because as you know, I'm a connoisseur of we hot, know. spicy chicken. We know. That packs some spice. Is it really? Yes. What? Yeah, so if you don't like spice, I wouldn't get this. Very, like it's a chipotle spicy sauce to it. 
having a great time. It's good. I actually am not a big fan of the tip yet. I think that's the one thing that most people buy when they come here because it looks on the this menu also, okay. like the coolest thing. It's like the square fried chicken. But it's really not that great. I think this is a better version of it. But let's try this mix right here. It's a relish of all sorts of different things. I don't think it's meant to be eaten by its own. It, it, it is a relish. I think you're supposed to actually eat it together with the chicken. But it does it does taste like it would like cut that spice a little. Okay. Because that chicken is kind of spicy. I think I'm gonna give us like a four to five pita. This is very good, but it's not the best thing here. But I would highly recommend you get this. De definitely over the normal tip gift. Especially if you like spicy stuff. It's actually very spicy. I had to go get myself a cup of water. That's how spicy it is. Luckily, here they give you free water, obviously. So you can go get as many cups as you want. But I had a bite like 10 minutes ago, and it's still lingering in the back of my throat. You do realize that waving your hand in front of your face doesn't make the spice go away inside your mouth. You, you always tell me that, but it actually did help, so you're actually wrong. <laughs> to get rid of that heat in my mouth, I'm gonna try the brand new Outpost Puff. This is a chocolate pastry filled with cajillo mousse, filled with Thai tea, panna cotta, spiced pineapple, and confectionery debris. There's actually even glitter on this. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell at all. You see that? Maybe yeah, a little yeah. bit? I don't understand what what I just read, so <laughs> I'm like, what is this? I actually looked up what guajillo is, and it's actually a type of chili in Mexico, so this is like gonna be a spicy chocolate mousse. So I just said that I wanted to get rid of the spice in my mouth, and I'm about to eat some spicy chocolate. I just had a bite of the chocolate mousse by itself, and it's so delicious. It's not spicy at all, don't worry, it's not spicy. It's so strange, all these flavors, you wouldn't think that they would go well together, this one over here, it almost tastes like a green milk, but I feel like the dominant flavor is definitely that chocolate. And then this is almost like a brownie, like a brownie brittle or something. And then I think that Thai tea panna cotta is actually on the bottom and it is good. I don't think a lot of people are gonna like this. I think it might be a little bit too strange for a lot of people's taste buds. Me personally, I think it's great. I love all these flavor combinations. So I'm probably gonna give it like a three and a half out of five pictures. It's not my favorite, but it's good. So all that new food is actually pretty great. I hope they add some new additions over in the California version of Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, I know whenever we come to Florida, we like to point out the differences between here and what it's like in Disneyland. So if you haven't seen, we actually did a whole video where we compare all the differences. We'll put it right over there. We want to say thank you to some of our Patreons. That includes Natalie and Dustin, John and Ranny, Patrick, Justin, and Merrily. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll, we'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next adventure. adventure.